Hello, welcome. Hey everyone, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Um, we'll give everyone just a little bit of time to lock in, get settled. Um, but while we wait, uh, we'd love to maybe hear where people are joining us from. So you can send a message in our question section. Uh, we'll use the questions throughout the webinar as well. So it'll be good for you to find it now. So you're ready to send questions as we're going through it. Okay, nice. So we have some people joining from Arizona, Orange County, Georgia. Nice. We're all over the map. I myself am in San Francisco. I'm up in uh, beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho these days. Where we just had snow, I was telling Lauren <laughs> about uh, the day before yesterday, and then we got a little bit of a dusting this morning. So it's quite early in the season to be getting snow, from what I understand, but not too unheard of. Yeah, our weather is pretty different. <laughs> it's a nice sun shining right now. Okay, welcome everyone. We still have a few more people trickling in, but we'll get started here in probably just about a minute. Um, and you can use the question box to send us a message of where you're joining us from um, and use the question box throughout the webinar for any questions that you have as we're going through it. Nice, Virginia. Okay, so we're yet to have a repeat. We're all joining from different places. Okay, Georgia as well. So some people are in the same place. Oh, and another Arizona. Okay, we're getting, getting some community. <laughs> All right, okay, so we can start to kick things off. Um, again, as we're going through, please feel free to send in questions. We're gonna have two different breaks within the webinar to go through um, the questions that you submit. So if you don't get it answered right away, we will get to it, um, but please, please, um, please send them in. So as we get started here, I'm going to just give a quick intro. Um, so I'm Lauren. I am product marketing manager at Bridge Athletic. Um, and I'm really excited that we have Craig here to guest host for us. This is the part one of three webinars that he's going to be doing with us. So make sure you keep your eye out for the next two. So we'll do one a month uh, through December. Um, so I'll just give a really quick bio or background on Craig before I pass it over. So Craig is uh, the Director of Programming and Coaching Education for Results Fitness University. We are lucky enough that Results uh, Fitness Headquarters uses us and their affiliate program through the uh, Results Fitness University does as well. And Craig does a lot of the education. So he is quite the bridge expert now. Um, he has 20 years of experience in the fitness industry, actually over 20 years, um, and has been featured in many publications and is also the co-author of Secrets of Successful Program Design. So really excited to have him run through the builder and go through how you can create some of your programming and bridge. So with all of that, I will pass it over to Craig um, and I will be here reading through the questions. So again, we will get to all of them. 
Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate that. Um, first off, kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do today, kind of the objectives. So, number one, we're going to do this in two parts. Part one, I'm just going to go through an overview of the Bridge platform and make you familiar with it. And this first webinar is really designed for the new user. For those of you that have been using the Bridge regularly, Stay tuned though, don't check out because there's probably going to be some tips and there's all these little nuances that can be massive time savers for you, kind of different ways of doing things. Because I'm going to show you exactly how we actually go about writing a program in the bridge. This is how we teach it to our new coaches too at Results Fitness. Uh, so stay tuned so you can see that process too for sure. And there may be some things I'll show you that you weren't aware of from the get-go. So um that's kind of the purpose of this first webinar we're going to do that first part and then the second part we'll stop ask for questions the second part what we're going to do is actually write that program and then at the end fill up the gap and ask uh, all the rest of the questions any kind of unanswered questions that we need to get through okay and then the second webinar that we're going to go through that's where we're going to really dive into some of the unique features that makes uh, the bridge different from, from other platforms and leverage some really unique things that you can do with the bridge that makes it you know the thing that you definitely want to use so quick story if you haven't don't know me um a whole lot lauren gave you my background but obviously as she said i've been doing this for 20 plus years um i'm old so i've been through i was actually around before the internet actually existed um in the early days so i've kind of been through the whole gamut of things when i first started doing personal training one-on-one -on -one. we actually wrote programs we used the system still but we wrote programs on cardstock with a pencil that we erased things and did it that way then when i went to results fitness we were using excel and word as spreadsheets and then next evolution was obviously into the digital realm so i've been there done that kind of seen the whole evolution of technology um at times i've been resistant to it so i do understand if there's those of you that have been resistant to technology, but when you see the benefits versus the drawbacks, then you can kind of, you'll start to get on board with how things are going and to make you a better coach or programmer. And remember the whole goal of this stuff is so you spend less time writing programs and more time coaching. And so you're writing the highest quality program. Okay, so with that said, let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh imagine you went to the computer desktop here on your computer and logged in for us we write all of our programs from a desktop you can do it from a tablet i have old eyes obviously so it's a lot easier from a visibility standpoint to write things from the desktop and that's really the primary per primary way it's designed to be done is from a desktop so when you open it up and you log yourself in, you're gonna be in your organization. This is actually our living organization of results fitness. And this is our home screen. So whenever you get lost, just take a look up here in the upper left-hand corner, that'll show you where you are. So if I press home, that puts me right here at the home screen. Now, there are four primary modules or three primary modules that we use at results fitness. Now, the nice thing about the bridge is there's a lot of sophisticated things that you can do with it. The other nice thing about the bridge is it can be as unsophisticated as you want it to be. And I try to keep things relatively unsophisticated when I'm teaching people how to use uh, the platform for the first time. So let's give you an overview of the homepage. The first module you will see here is our Teams module. So the way we have things set up in our organization is that every one of our coaches has a team created. So we add them as a coach into the organization, then they have login credentials, and then we create a team where they put all of their athletes or all their clients on that team. And that's a real easy way for our coaches to manage the athletes that they are responsible for. So every athlete knows who their coach is, knows who's writing their program, and knows who their go-to person is. So that is how this is all set up. I can simply open up this module by pressing Teams, and then opening it, I can see the teams that I'm actually assigned to on in the organization, then all of the teams in our organization. We have some other teams that we set up for different challenges or remote clients or things like that. And some of our coaches are just on the organization team uh, in the organization as well. So that is the teams module. This is a, a kind of a 10,000 foot view at it. And then I'm gonna 
gloss over a couple modules here. The other main module that you'll see is the members module here. So that's a real easy way to add athletes or clients to your organization, add coaches to your organization. And it's also a way to deactivate members or reactivate members. So if I click on the members module, I just opened up another tab here. So imagine I clicked on that. I have an avatar that I've created, which I call Bridge Tester. And it's just a mock email that I put on there. This is a way for me to kind of test programs and do demos and uh, show people different things on the platform. So if I type in that name, it comes up here. Now, if I hover over it, it's gonna show me a few different things. It's gonna show me obviously the name, it's gonna show me the last time the athlete or client logged in, what team that they're on or teams, you can be on multiple teams as a client, whether or not they have been accepted in the organization or accepted their invite into the organization, their email. And then if I hover over that, I can also edit over here. And this is where I can deactivate or change their role from uh, athlete to coach if I wanted to, or change the teams that they're on. So we have a client move over to a different time slot that they train at our gym. We're going to need to move them onto a different coach's team because someone else is going to become responsible for them. Uh, then if we go up to the top of the menu bar here, we can see all the coaches in our organization. It's highlighted as bridge right now. If I take that off, you'll see all of the coaches that we have in our organization. The admin in our organization. Now, the way we set this up is that the admin is uh, just a different email. What I found is when I had myself set up as admin with my work email, I was getting them all the emails on everything, single thing, all the different communications in the bridge. And I was kind of overwhelmed with emails and having to clean out emails all the time. So we just set up a separate account to be the admin. And then we can go in and check that when we need to versus my own personal uh, work email. This will show all the athletes in our organization, and this will show all the people that have been deactivated from the organization. We can reactivate them into the organization as well. So that's the members module. Like I said, a real easy way to manage your members, just kind of keep it real uh, clear on where to go. And uh, you can do it from other places, but that's the easiest one, the most straightforward one. Now, next thing we'll go into is the library which we'll spend a little bit more time on here in just a moment there's a couple of other modules that i glossed over here which i'll show you there's analytics analytics module is awesome i kept it purposely blank for the purpose of this and so no one gets confused by it you can use that that was something that came out i believe during the pandemic but you can look at different reports and look at different metrics and uh things that you want to look at from an analytics standpoint in your organization, which is awesome to use if you're really into that stuff. We are, like I said, I don't overwhelm right from the get go from that. So I want to make you as one of our, our uh, kettlebell mentors, Dr. Chang, Mark Chang is called serviceable with using the bridge platform. So that's a module you can look into later. And then there's forms, which I, you know, is a brand new module that just popped on and maybe Lauren can talk about that at the end if people are interested because I'm interested in learning a bit more about forms as well because that just came up within the last couple of days on one of the updates, which is a nice thing, of course, about the bridge. If you're a, a regular user of it, you know there are frequent updates and improvements that are always going on. Okay, so teams module, members module, now let's go into the library. And this is really the meat and potatoes and guts of the bridge platform. And one of the reasons why I love it so much, if you attended our last webinar, uh, where we talked about utilizing the bridge platform and kind of moving over from Excel. The nice thing about this in our library, if I open that up, it is set up from a macro to micro level, meaning, remember, when we write, we write programs, not just workouts. And that's really one of the big differentiators with the bridge is that it's designed around that idea and concept. So there's tabs up here that go across going from that macro to micro level. Our programs are all the programs within our organization. There's phases that can be saved as templates. And remember from our last presentation, templates are outlines. They're not things that are set in stone. They're outlines uh, for you to utilize. They're like a skeleton. And then there's individual workout or training sessions that can be templated and saved. Then there's blocks, not to be confused with phases. Remember blocks are the components of your training session. So again, we're going from that working down to the micro level from workout to the training components and the blocks, and then our individual exercises. There's an upgrade, which is a progressions, which we have in our organization. That's an upgrade that you can get, which I do utilize, 
it's actually a way to kind of make some different plans that you can insert within programs, which I can kind of show you uh, if you want to see that. Someone has a question about that, but I'm going to leave that for later. And then within the individual exercises, there's set rep protocols and templates and different things that you can set up. And we're really going to dive into that stuff in the other two webinars where we go over standardizing things and uh, kind of some good unique features that you can use to save yourself time on that. So looking at the programs, what's going to happen on the viewer here, it's going to show you all of the assigned programs in the organization. These are anything that people are currently on. And it just updates to programs that have been recently worked on. So it updates to the top because it's edited on. You can default and change it and organize it different ways. It kind of defaults to the edited on things. And the most recent one comes up. Now, you can also filter things uh, by all the programs in your organization, by all the programs uh, that includes all of the content from Exos and Results Fitness Templates organization, and for FMS, if you have that feature in your platform, that shows all of those. And then just within your organization, you can filter those programs out. These are all the active programs on there. And then you can do that by your login credentials. I'm logged in as the admin right now, this, and I usually use that. To write programs so that shows all the programs that i've written in the organization so that can filter that and then there's the exos templates that are in the organization and when i'm on all that shows all those or i can just filter that out and these are the results fitness templates organization we have seven of those and there's kind of three kind of main buckets that we use which is our general fitness template our kind of hardcore fat loss body transformation template and then our performance template, which is our athlete training plan. And then there is an at-home program that we use from Rachel Cosgrove during the pandemic that is also on there. So that is the programs module. It can also be filtered by things that are in your online store, unassigned programs, uh, or completed programs. So this will actually show all the programs that have been completed by members as well. So you can do that and filter these things either way, any way you want to by uh, clicking on the status of those. There's a program. This is something I'm going to show you kind of one of our unique things that we do. Uh, there's a demo program that I tag. This is where I actually create a lot of stuff. There's actually a program. I assign it to myself so I can see what these things look like. But this is where I create a lot of the template blocks and different set rep schemes and stuff like that so it can be saved somewhere. But it allows me to see it while I'm writing it so I can look at it on an app on the mobile view to be able to see what it looks like. So that's a kind of a tip that you can use as a, as a feature for yourself to be able to design things. It's really a designer uh, block more than a demo block, creator block, I call it, okay? So with that said, that's programs. Let's go into the phases module real quick. These are just individual phases on there that are saved as templates. This is a lot of the EXO stuff. To be honest with you, I don't save any phases as templates because they're already saved in the program. And I'll show you that when we actually write a program. We have lots of different training session or workout blocks saved within our organization. I'm gonna filter it over here by clicking on results fitness. So there's lots of different things that we have saved as workout sessions that we can use and then blocks. Tons of these. This is the main thing that we use as templates is blocks on it. So we have some FMS blocks that we've made within our organization to use. Um, there's different set rep uh, progression descriptions that we'll use as blocks. Uh, in particular, we use it for our range of motion activation movement prep or quote unquote warm up blocks. We use that a lot. Uh, we'll show you how we integrate that and we write that program as well. And then we've got all our different exercises as well saved here within our organization. So the results fitness templates uh, menu is the one that we share with all of our affiliates. And these are all of the different exercises on there. So those are saved in there. We tag these too. So that's the other unique feature is if you're familiar with the way we classify our exercises, we create tags for those exercises. For example, let's just look at one of my favorites exercise categories, hip hinge, symmetrical stance, or parallel stance. And this is gonna be exercises that include like our deadlifts. So 
we tag it that way. So it functions, if you're familiar with Excel, just like a drop down menu. It's just not necessarily, uh, you know, you can't move it around, but it's a whole list of those exercises. You can constrain it to the primary choices that you have by tagging it. All right. So that is how we do that. And then what I want to show you, I'm going to take a quick look. I have a little checklist here to make sure I go through all of this for you. The other key feature here that is very unique and one of the ways to stay organized within your organization is the folder feature. So when you, right from the get-go, once you have your organization created, you're going to get a folder for your organization. You're going to go here immediately. So we save some of our templates here. And when I say templates, you got to understand, <laughs> we always say nomenclature is the bane of our existence, right? When we say templates, it can be either unassigned programs that you use as a template or an outline, or it can be an actual template within BridgeSpeak, which is something like that when you, as an, a template organization that creates an auto copy when you click on it. So unassigned programs in your own organization are, can function as templates or the other way around, an actual template in the bridge uh, where you click on it and it auto copies. So you can store, we stored a lot of our stuff originally before we had a way to write those things as templates. Now, when you create a coach team, it also creates a folder here. So my team right here, the way I organize this is by, and it's a little bit of a mess right now, so I'm embarrassed to show you it. I create a folder for each of my clients that I've ever written programs for by just opening it up and then going down to the bottom and typing in their name, okay? So I'm gonna type in one right now for my bridge tester demo client and call it bridge tester. I'm gonna save it. And then I would simply put my bridge tester program into that. There it is. So here's a copy of an old program. I can open that up. These three dots are always useful to know. You click that up, you're gonna get a, a menu and some choices to do different things. Move over to it. I already have another bridge tester folder created. I'm gonna move it right into that, okay? So that is one of the unique features for that. I highly recommend doing that. And that keeps everything kind of contained within the programming platform. Let me show you a little more of a granular view here too from uh, another standpoint on the Teams module, because this is a way to communicate with clients. If I go into my team, since I work remotely, I don't have a ton of clients on my team anymore because I don't coach a whole lot of clients in person. And most of my time now is spent doing coach education. I have a module here with all my clients on it. So within my coach module, if I go onto that. This is where I can communicate with clients. This is where I see activity that's earmarked for clients. This is where I can look at metrics. This is where I can look at events that are coming up, the different forms that are on there. And also from this view, we can go deeper and look at, I'm going to go to the bridge tester avatar again here. There's not a ton of stuff on here because I use it for, like I said, demonstration purposes. And then there's metrics where I can look at the individual client page. This is where all the communications can occur. I can write notes about a client here. Um, they're only uh, visible to me as my login, so they're personalized to me. No one else sees those except for me as the login credentials. There's communications where I can talk to the athlete right from here to type a message to the client and have those communications. Uh, there's metrics I can look at. I can look at a status update. This is where I'll often write notes about training someone remotely, how, what equipment they have available. For example, this is also where we can see what their attendance looks like as far as how long, how far along they are in any particular training program. I can look at any kind of training programs that are assigned to a client by clicking on this drop down. This is also, if I click on those three dots, this is where I can edit a training program as well. And if I look at a workout, this can give me an overview of what they have completed. 
So what I can also do, if I click on I'm going to go to edit program. I can also go to the page and look at what their training calendar looks like as far as training sessions completed. It's not showing on this because it's a demo. Uh, let me switch over to my other one that I have some data on, I think. It can give me an overview of what programs they've completed in the software. Like I said, I haven't used this one in a while for demonstration purposes, but there'll be check marks and things that I can see what weights they've done and things like that. Okay, so that is a brief overview of kind of the whole bridge features and what things look like. So with that said, that's kind of the first part of the presentation of the 10,000 foot view. What questions do we have, Lauren? Great, thanks for taking us through that. Um, we have two questions so far. Um, so the first one goes back to when you were kind of taking us through like the team structure. Um, so the question is, what if you have two coaches for one team? So you can have two coaches on one team. You're gonna get, what you have to understand is when you have two coaches on one team, for example, I have two coaches on this team, which is me and the admin. So if we look at my team, coaches, if I go look at that, this is the admin and this is me. So there's two coaches on there. What's gonna happen is that coach has access to all the members on that on this team. There's communications that can be done uh, with the members by both coaches. And uh, you can filter that by having less coaches on one team too. So you can remove coaches. So we just keep it really simple. We don't have them all on all the coaches on all teams just because there's way too many communications going through and it's really hard to manage that way. So and within our organization at the gym, we just typically have one coach max of two coaches on a team if that answers that question for you. The admin, when you're logged in as an admin, you're kind of the overseer of everything. So the admin credentials give you uh, the benefit of being able to access anything on it and see all communications within the organization. So you want to keep those uh, to yourself if you're trying to keep information you know, from being shared with amongst all the coaches. So you can just kind of have that ability to do that. If that answers that question for you. If not, let me know and I can clarify. Um, so yeah, it sounds like they do need to have two coaches. Do I need to put coaches in as admins? Um, so an admin will automatically be a coach of every team and then you can just add a second coach. They don't need to be an admin. Yeah, the admin is able to see everything. Like for example, I don't have the admin assigned to all the coaches in our organization, but I can go in and look at and see what's going on there. I took the admin off of all of those things just because I didn't want to have all those communications when I my email was the admin of it. Now I don't see those because I, like I said, I log into that every so often to check those uh, messages on, as the admin, you, but not on my own personal account. So that's what I would suggest setting up for that. But I can see everything when I'm in the admin role. Yeah. Yeah, admin have access to all teams and then coaches just to the ones they're added on to. Yep. Um, okay, we have one other question here. Um, I see some people have their hand raised. Um, if you have a question, please submit it in the question box so we can read it out. Um, so we'll give you all a second to send in any other questions while we answer this next one. Um, so this question has to do with folders. Um, can you move folders? Well, let's show you. So when we open up folders, and then can you move them up and down over here, like slide these up? No, <laughs> not that I'm aware of, unless you know something different. They're just kind of organized um, by the order they were put in, I think. You can organize them by the view over here edited by status and the name it ranks it either alphabetically from z to a or a to z correct Lauren? yeah and then the the ones that are written kind of in the like black um those are all 
the like main folder. So those are all based on the teams. And then Craig's able to add the subfolders within. So those yeah. I think could be moved from team to team. Um, but I'm not certain. But the main like Coach Craig, that's like his team name. So that one can't be moved. Yeah, so if I was going to move a client folder over, um, what we have done in our organization, we just create with a, on a new coach. Like if I was to move this over to Coach Jenny, she would just create a new folder for a client that I moved over. And I could just, she could, I could simply move the clients to her as the admin over onto her team. And then she can put them into the client folder. So the old programs can go in there. I mean, you can access all of the old programs that have been written um, for clients. In here. So they'll just show as if I go into one of my powerlifter clients, her completed programs show up here as well as completed. And the way we do things, this is kind of a, a thing we'll show you when we write the program. One of our kind of standard operating procedures that we require our coaches to do, give them a little bit of freedom, but you must have the client full first name and last name in there. That's non-negotiable and a standard operating procedure within our organization because we have to be able to search their program really easily. And it's super easy to find a program if you just type in the client name. And from a visibility standpoint in your mind, you can remember who you wrote different things for. So it's easy to find stuff um, in that manner. Great, yeah. And, and it looks like there's a follow-up question on this about moving, um, can you move teams into different folders? So no, that's not possible. The the team will be the main folder and then you can just kind of move the subfolders within. Yep. Yeah. So as soon as you as soon as you create a team, it creates a as soon as I add a team right here, it creates a folder for that team. Okay. Until you get rid of that team, you're gonna have that folder. Yeah, great. Um, so hopefully that covered the questions on the folders. Um, we have another question about programming. Can you bring back completed programs to be uncompleted? Yeah, yeah good question. So that is uh, one of the cool parts about this. But as soon as you, this is a, a, actually a really good thing, lead in, and we'll kind of stop here so I can make sure I have time to show you how we actually write a program and show you some other details here. Um, one of the things that happens automatically, as soon as you write a program, and a program has been completed by someone, you now have a template <laughs> created, which you can utilize. So let's just go into a completed program that we have in our organization. So this will show you some of the completed programs. I can simply open up, I'm gonna go to, oh, let me see here. I'm gonna open up one of my bridge tester programs just to protect the innocent names here uh here's some completed programs that i've used for demos okay so if i want to use this as a, a template and use it again all i simply do is click on it and then go over here to the three dot feature which is one of my most useful things to know just hit that and i clone it and now what happens is I've got a copy of that program that I can assign to a client or utilize as a template. So one of the things that you can do is just call this a, one of the things that we were doing before we had a template organization is just call this template and label this. We would write notes to our coaches and say, make copy. So they didn't write over our unassigned program. And that way you can search it and find it within your organization like that. So that's the beauty of this. Now I have that. And if you have, this is one of the things that kind of teaches a tip when we talk about programming. If you've got someone that is very, has very similar goals, that has very similar kind of training history, you've got a, a template created for a new client when you have someone come in that is just like someone else you've written a program for. So utilize that so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time and then just make small tweaks to it to customize it for the person in front of you. 
So hopefully that answers that question. Anything else coming up, Lauren? And otherwise, I'm going to jump into the part two and show you how to write your first program here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's jump into it. Okay, well, let's rock and roll here. So we've made you kind of aware of the software and how to kind of see things and understand where things are. Now we're going to write a program. So client sits in front of you. The way we organize things is we do a strategy session with them. We immediately will send an invite to the client sitting in front of us. I'm going to use that bridge tester avatar. So first thing that we do, I'm sorry, I just clicked on that without telling you what I was doing, is I go to add athlete. So I'm going to choose the team they're going to go on. They would go on my team. I confirm that. And then I would simply type in, and this is coming up because this person is already in the organization. I would type in their first, last name, email, add them to my organization, and they're going to get an immediate email sent to them asking them to create a password to join the uh, organization and accept the invite. Now, you do need to know that I don't have any access as the admin or coach to change their password or do anything like that. So it's on them to create something that they can remember because we don't have access to that. So make sure that they know that up front. Now, you can still write them a program before they have accepted the invite as well. And you can check from the members module whether or not they have actually accepted the invite yet too when they come into uh, your organization for the first training session. So do know that, okay? So let's say the person has accepted the invite. Now I'm gonna write a new program. So there's a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can do it from the member module within the team. Uh, I just do it right here from the home screen to keep things simple because there's a button right here to do that. And I just press new program. Now I'm gonna call this bridge tester. Well, first let's just call it the name of the program. So what I like to do, and I think this is important, and we'll talk about this in the webinar number three, I want to write the program made objective or goal theme into the program name. Because when we assign programs, and I talked about this earlier when we drop in phases, we drop phases in one at a time. I want to know what program I'm pulling it from. So we're going to call this general fitness bridge tester which is my avatar i'm going to call it and i personally we make this negotiable within our organization but i like the number the number of programs that i am on so this is going to be just number one for the sake of argument because this is this person's uh first program and i save it okay once that happens i get this screen now this can be a little bit confusing so pay close attention or i can build the page from scratch I don't recommend doing that um, <laughs> generally. Okay, so we want to, you can do it as a template phase. When I do it as a template phase, this is going to ask me to pull from a phase that I have saved as a template. So I don't want you to get confused here when I use the word template. What we're go going to do, the process we use is from an existing program. There's also a training engine that you can use as an AI to create training phases. I haven't dove into that a whole lot just yet because I still like to have a lot of control. So I use from um, my existing program, okay? So I click on that and I press next. And this is actually where you can, we talked about having that idea of a client similar to a new client that comes in. I can pull from a completed program right here and go to Bridge Tester and just the completed programs from that bridge tester person. And I can drop a phase in from there, a previously written phase that way. So that's an awesome feature too. So you don't actually have to copy out the whole program, but you do have to remember what program you pulled it for if you use this technique, okay? Let's back up for a sec, just to show you that again. So this is that kind of workbook opened up. I'm just gonna press add phase again from existing programs. Our process for this that we use is we pull it from our results fitness templates, okay? So this exists here. There are some choices that we wanna use. Now, we're gonna use a general fitness template. I have two templates that I've created on the back end. What I did is just took all our old Excel spreadsheets and moved them into the bridge. There's some time spent in the back end work, obviously, but it really saves a ton of time going forward. 
we're going to use some, I, I write them as either an exercise skeleton, which is just the exercise component name, meaning like in that hip hinge example, I showed you, it's going to say hip hinge symmetrical. And then I go in and create, I choose the exercise that I want to use or to save time for someone that's brand new, I have pre-selected exercises chosen. So I'm going to use that. So I open that up and I'm just going to simply drop in phase one to this client. Now, the reason why we don't use the phases template because they're already right here, the phase templates. I just need to remember and know which program I'm pulling this from. So if I click on that, then I press insert. What it basically has done is cloned a copy into this program for me to be able to utilize. So you see phase one here. And again, these are just like tabs in an Excel workbook. While I'm here, I'm gonna show you how to assign a second phase before we dive in. So we keep these in columns. We often use what we call an AB split, which is two full body days. We keep them in columns because that makes it easier to see, which is a feature I will show you uh, when we start opening that up to edit things. Now, let's say they have completed phase number one. I'm gonna add phase two. This is why we write the name in it because I'm gonna pull that from an existing program again. I go here to results fitness templates. And then I open up, I remember it was that pre-selected one. So there's only two choices here from general fitness. And I'm gonna drop in phase two and insert. And that's in here. For us, what we do is we assign programs on the playlist view, which is the flexible programming view. They're just in playlist order where the person just alternates A and B programs coming in. So we usually just assign programs one phase at a time as they come in, just so clients don't get lost and get into the wrong phase, just kind of gives them some boundaries and constraints on that. But that's as simple as that is. And when you are, people always ask this question, when you go into the member module, this shows you how far along they are in phases, what phase they're on, how far they need, that you're gonna email about it too, when they've only got a week left to complete a program. So that's a nice thing about that too. Back in the old days, we had to write them, you know, on a chart and the coach had to remember to write it in and the program member to, had to remember to check it. So we really minimize, you know, clients getting new phases on time, utilizing the bridge. That's a, a definite feature that is a, a big benefit to using uh, a digital software like this. I'm gonna delete that phase just cause I don't wanna have this client get that phase. Now, this program has not been assigned yet. Once you assign it to a client, they have access to view it. I'm going to go ahead and assign it now. I usually write the program first and then assign it. So there's kind of pluses and minuses to both. Um, if, you, if you forget to assign it, obviously the client's not going to have it. It's really easy to assign it. So it doesn't take much time, but I'm going to assign it right now. So I click on my team. Then I'm going to find that client, which is Bridge Tester. I'm going to press next. And I have two options. We usually utilize this feature, and this is very unique to the bridge too. Most digital softwares have, have you using uh, a calendar to be able to assign days. So it's really hard to move things around and it's really easy to get lost if you're a client. We just assign it as a playlist for most of our clientele, our general fitness clients that utilize an A-B split, which is the one that we use the most. Um, for our, my powerlifters, I do use workouts on a calendar, so I want them doing certain training sessions on certain days, um, and they have some flexibility to move it around a little bit with that, but this is the most common usage of that. So I select workout this playlist, I press next, and then it's going to show the athlete, the team that they're going on, the name of it. I can edit the name here further if I need to, and I'm going to press assign training. Now, it's going to say this client has other programs assigned to them. That's another awesome feature is you can have multiple programs assigned to the client at the same time. So we'll often put mobility workouts into this. We can put FMS corrections assigned to them. Um, we can do lots of different things outside of just one training program, having to fit all that stuff in here. We can have multiple things going on and it's real easy to be able to access that as a client. So I'm gonna keep all these programs active. If I didn't, I would turn it off and that will close that program out and complete that program after 24 hours, I believe. Now, it's going to ask you if you want to send email notifications. I usually don't. I just turn those off because I can just communicate through the, the bridge with them. 
without sending a notification. It's your decision to make. You have that choice. And then it's been assigned. And you notice the bridge tester is uh, highlighted here. I can go onto their page and now take a look at their training calendar. When they complete sessions, it will show up on it. So I was trying to show you earlier, there'll be check marks on that, the green check marks. When a program is open but not been completed, it will be a green dot. When it's been missed, it would be a red dot. Okay, so this is an overview of what all those would look like. And this is the actual kind of the playlist that the client will see when they log into mobile view. Now I need to get back to that program. How in the world do I get back to that? Three dots, those are your best friends. Click on that and edit the program. This is also where you can move it to another team. That question may come up. If I need to assign it to another team, I would move it here, choose the organization. Do know though, you have to have that other team uh, selected for this client. You have to put them on the team first before you move it. Okay, so make sure you do that. So with that said, we're gonna go into edit program. And let's go into some of the nuances of this. So we're gonna get into the micro level a little bit. We're gonna open this up. And oh boy, it kicked me out. That means one of my coaches at the gym has logged in to the admin account. We had access to that. They're supposed to be on their coach account. So when I open that up, I'm gonna open that up. And I can do this a couple of different ways. I just clicked on the phase to open it up and that just defaults and puts me on week one. We have six weeks. They're not necessarily weeks. They're just six rows, right? Six workouts, six A workouts, six B workouts selected. And then I was, when I first did this, I label them workout one, workout two. That's not really necessary because it's listed in order when the client sees the playlist. Now, these are all pre-selected exercises. The only thing that's not pre-selected for this client is the mobility drill. We usually, that will be some kind of FMS correction that we will use. And if you're not familiar, FMS is actually partnered with the bridge too. So when you input FMS scores, if you wanna see this later, just ask me, it'll actually show you the recommended corrections to utilize based on an individual client FMS scores, so they use the FMS algorithm to create that, and then you can drop those in, which I'll show you how to do as an example here. Let's say this person, a shoulder mobility is a one. I'll show you as I go through and write the program, how we do that. So there's, back in the old days, uh, first using the bridge, you needed to, uh, basically the best practice was to write out your first training week and then clone it out if you were using the same rep parameters or if you're going to change the rep parameters you could switch them once you kind of cloned out all the weeks and i still use that sometimes if i have the same rep parameters selected but nowadays there is a, a upgrade where you can actually change the set and rep parameters for an exercise choice so i'll show you that here in a second as we go through so first off the very first thing that i'm going to do is i need to write a ramp now, what we've done in the bridge, one of the things that we created was we wrote as an exercise and we add an exercise, we wrote it in capital letters, just a category name, which is like self-massage, positional breathing reset. This is just a category. And these are those tags idea that we use for that. So I could write a range of motion activation movement prep completely individualized for a client by going through each of these. And we really use it as a checklist to make sure we're not missing anything when we design a ramp. Um, but what we did was created those blocks as templates, which are the training session components. And if you just click on our good friends, the three dots right here, open that up. This is where I can do lots of different things. I can add some media with your voice notes. This is a way that I communicate things to a client. I use that feature a lot. If I don't wanna write something out. I wanna communicate something very clearly to a client. I'll attach a voice note to it for a remote client. Um, you can put PDF files and different things like that. We'll talk about that in future webinars. But what we're gonna use is just the switch button right here. Click on that, and this is gonna take us to a block, which is the component. I'm gonna go to results fitness templates here, or results fitness, and write ramp. Now, what I created was kind of a general, I called it ramp zero after Joe Penn's kind of block zero idea. This is ramp zero, like a starting point ramp for someone. You can make like what number one, whatever you want it to. You can preview it right here to see what's in it. 
and I'm just going to press switch. Now what that's going to do is just change that block over to the common things that I would give someone for their entry level if they're a novice beginner into uh, their first training session. So we train a lot of beginners, obviously. We use this a lot. And I'm going to go through and just switch out anything that I needed to switch out. So within this uh, ramp is going to be a lot of fundamental movement patterns that we're going to practice. This is where we teach them how to hip hinge. This is where we teach them, uh, you know, how to do uh, bottom of a, a symmetrical stance position where they're, you know, in a half kneel. We do that during the ramp off. And so we can kind of do a lot of that front end, back end teaching when they get to the actual uh, movement pattern that they're using in their strength training. They've already been familiarized, it, familiarized with it and during the ramp. So that goes there. I'm going to delete this block and just clone this one. And then it clones right below it. And I move it right over. So now I've got the ramp done here. And then I'm going to take a look at their core exercises and make sure that's what I want. Okay, those are cool. And then I'm going to look at, let's say this client, I don't, maybe we start them with a body weight box sit squat to pattern their squat exercise. I'm going to open that up. And let's say I, I don't want to use that. I want to start them with a the goblet squat. They don't need to start this uh, at this level. I need to switch that. So I'm going to switch that exercise over. I can just search for goblet squat if I know what I want to use. I can use my tagging system, which I can search for the tag, which is squat symmetrical. Then it opens up. I click out of the side here onto the white. And then I'm going to find, I can search within this constraint of goblet squat. I click outside just to make sure I'm clicking the one that I want. And notice it's filtered to results fitness templates here. It can be all exercises. You'll have all of the exercises and the whole uh, have access to. I'm just going to select goblet squat right here. Now it's going to ask me if I want to apply this switch to just this one instance or to all days. This is why it's important to keep those things in columns. I'm going to assign it to the phase on day one. So what that means is anywhere on day one in that column view that says body weight sit, sit squat, it's going to change it to a goblet squat. Okay. I'm going to change the parameters to, I always suggest unchecking that to make sure that's what you want. Because if I'm switching this out, I don't need this note here anymore. Because I'm going to use a goblet squat. And I want to change the weight parameter. I don't need a height parameter. And we're going to use a kettlebell. So we're going to put that in kilos. Maybe I want an RP parameter on there as well. Let's see. Not necessarily have to use that. At least I want to start them at an RPE six on the first set. And I'm going to add an extra set here because eventually I, when, when we introduce a program, usually it's with you know one set less than we're going to be using as an intro week. But I'm going to save this all the way across. So I'm going to, on the whole six BA workouts, I'm going to save it. Now it's going to confirm it. I'm going to press yes. Now what we're going to do is look at that and see the load progression view. So when I press load progression view, that's gonna show me all of the day one or the A workouts across. So this is look up here in the upper left, that's all day one, the A workouts. Day two is all the B workouts, okay? Let's open that up, oops. A little bit slow because we're using all of my internet bandwidth right now currently they click back on day one all right let's open up that block and you can kind of open these plus signs here just so you can see everything and you'll notice i didn't get all those ramp zeros written in there i can do that real quickly by selecting copy to multiple and i just move it onto each day and then it, it, when you do this it adds it to the bottom so you just have to drag it up and then you have to go through i do that on each day then i just delete that other extra ramp that i have there so just know that going forward i'm going to delete this real quick just so it's out of the way so i open up that goblet squad you can see that goblet squat, that box sit squat has been changed to a goblet squat 
all the way across for all six A sessions, okay? I notice on day one, there's three sets. So I just go in there and I delete a set to make it two sets for the intro week. Maybe it's one set that you use with someone that's brand new and you only use two sets for the rest of the sessions, whatever you wanna do. But you'll notice I have 12 rep sets selected for everything on here. This is where you can actually utilize, you know, some unique rep programming schemes too, to be able to switch that around. If I wanna use some undulating rep programming schemes, like maybe I wanna go 12, 10, eight, and then 12, 10, eight. You can do that and set it up that way from this screen. If I wanted to switch this out and I get an FMS score, I'm going to go into uh, maybe they got a, a shoulder mobility of a one. I want to select a rib pull. Sideline rib pull goes in on here. I select that. I'm going to say I want them to do a rep on each side with four to five breaths. I select that there, each side. I want to communicate that. Now, I only wanna change in this one instance because I don't wanna do this everywhere because otherwise anything that's labeled mobility stability is gonna change all of those on this day to sideline rim pulls. I just wanted this one instance. So I select that this time and put that there and then it changes it. I could select it all the way across if I wanted to, but what I'd often do is just copy it and stick it in there. So I would do that. And honestly, I took a long time explaining that. That whole process, I could get a phase assigned to a client if I have it set up that way, pre-selected exercises in about 10 minutes <laughs> to get that done. So that's how long it takes to assign that. Then I would just go through and add that second phase like I showed you earlier. And that is how you would write your first program. So hopefully that makes you serviceable now and gets you ready to roll. And with that said, I know we're at a few minutes left. I want to answer any relevant questions anybody wants to know. We don't have any submitted yet, um, so we'll give you all a second in case you're writing in your questions now. Um, but thanks for taking us through that, Craig. The load progression view, I think, is definitely missed sometimes, but huge yeah. time saver. Yeah, it's a definite game changer for sure. That term gets used a lot, but it is awesome to use, especially if you use some of those undulating rep schemes. And it also lets you check your work to make sure everything's how you want it to be when it's delivered to the client. Um, getting started with it, you all add this in. If you're brand new to the bridge, that can be a lot that I just showed you and I'm super comfortable with it so I can fly through it. I do know that. The easiest way to get started with it is just take one of your own programs and write yourself a program. Start off right from the get-go and write yourself a program. Take a program from a different platform, take a program from Excel spreadsheet, whatever you use, and input it into the bridge. The way I just showed you, you can do a template, a, a phase from scratch, and just write it all out, take your time with it, and do that best practice of writing out, you know, your first week, and then clone it out, and assign it to yourself, and then get comfortable using it. Use a separate email, not your work email, and just act like you're a client and write it. And then, after you get comfortable with it, assign it to one of your uh, clients that, you know, is really easy going and would be is willing to beta test something for you. Tell them it's a beta test and have them try it. That is a real easy way, non-threatening way to get started with it and get yourself comfortable. And in no time, you'll be rolling along with it once you kind of get some of this, you know, time overhead and, and getting comfortable with it out of the way. But I think you can get pretty comfortable with it if you just sit down for an hour or two with it and block that time out and you'll be very, 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 very comfortable and serviceable with it after spending that time. Yeah, yeah, great point. Um, so we don't have any questions that came in. Um, I wanted to just note that we did record this session, so we'll be sending out the recording for you all to reference back to. That could also be a great resource, maybe as you are building out um, a first program or working on another program to kind of follow along as you're going through Bridge. Um, and then also, reminder, Craig will be hosting two more webinars for us, so keep an eye out for information on those. The next one will be in November, um, and we'll send out info just like we did for this one, so you all can sign up. Yeah, for sure. I think you'll enjoy that next one, too. That's one we're going to go a lot of the unique features uh, that the bridge has to offer, which is 
you know, some things that are massive, massive, massive time savers and really allow you to be real clear when you're communicating with your clients, which is really, really, really important when you're delivering uh, programs in person or remotely. Um, and we'll talk about a lot of the things that I kind of really glanced over uh, as far as the, you know, the real nuanced micro level of writing set rep protocols and being able to save notes to communicate things the same way and use utilizing some of those voice recordings and things like that. I'll show you some some uh, examples that will kind of blow your mind when you see the capabilities. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, hopefully you all are too. Um, well, with that, uh, thank you, Craig, for taking the time to walk us through this. Thank you all for joining. And again, keep an eye out for the recording and the next webinar. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks.